Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Fabulous Concert Programs number 120. And today is actually a theme concert. I'm not really big on theme concerts usually, because usually the themes don't work as concerts. But here, <coughs> excuse me, here, I think we've got one that it's kind of a lot of fun, and it has some very interesting repertoire, which I've talked about on various occasions. So it's all about weddings. Yeah, marriages and weddings and wedding marches and processionals and things like that. I think it's really kind of a lot of fun, because listen to what the repertoire is. Part one, there's four works divided by intermission. First, we get the Grieg Wedding Day at Trollhagen in one of the orchestral versions. No one ever plays these things. And I, I mean, the tune for Wedding Day at Trollhagen, it's one of the great earworms in the history of music, right? It gets stuck in your head forever. It drives you crazy. So that's a wonderful way to open the concert. It's jolly and fun and sunny. And then, because this is the Scambati Symphonic Music second video, um, Scambati being the wonderful Italian conductor of instrumental music primarily. Now, one of you said to me, um, I said we were going to do all three Scambati symphonies. And you said, oh, I thought he wrote only two. Well, no, he wrote three. And the third is his nuptial symphony or wedding symphony, the Sinfonia Epitalamo, Epitalamio, Epitalamio, yes, Epitalamion, you know, it's a wedding tribute is what it is, you know, whatever that Latin term is. So it's the Sinfonia Epitalamio, which he wrote for some, you know, aristocratic occasion, um, which meant it never got played again or no one cared. But it's a genuine symphonic poem, really, more than anything else. It's in it's in three parts and sort of five-ish movements. In the church is the first part. And then there's in the garden. And oh my gosh, it has a, a romance in it that is beyond gorgeous. Then you've got some like peasant dance things. And then there's a, a concluding, you know, procession, a march. And it's really, really beautiful. I, I, it's lovely, lovely music. It has a certain, you know, predominance of maybe softish, quiet, romantic music because hey, it's a wedding, right? You know, and and but it it, it deserves to be performed, and it's beautiful. And I have it sitting here. Where did I have it? Oh, here it is. Sorry, it got it got stuck. Yes, you could look at my tonsils. Got stuck behind these things. Here it is on Naxos, coupled with his second symphony. And it's a 38-minute long piece. It's a serious major work. It was written in 1887. This is the world premiere recording with uh, Francesco La Vecchia, the Orchestra Sinfonica di Roma on Naxos. So yeah, it exists. It's, it's the third of his symphonies. Um, well, it's a, another symphony or symphony-like thing. So, you know, why not? So we listen to that and it's lyrical, and lovely and sunny and everyone's having a good time. Let me put that over there. Um, and then we have our intermission. Now, after intermission, we do the Mendelssohn Wedding March, because why not? I, again, you know, you want to hear the entire Midsummer Night's Dream is Dental Music, which, of course, is a masterpiece and fabulous. But the Wedding March makes a wonderful little four-minute or so introduction to whatever the second half of the program is. It's another wedding procession. There are a lot of marches in weddings, but they're nice marches. They're light marches. They're not like, you know goose-stepping, you know, Nazi marches. They're, they're, they're nice marches. Nobody ever did a Nazi wedding symphony. That might be interesting. But anyway, never mind. And then we follow that up with the Goldmark Rustic Wedding Symphony because, you see, in the, in the Scambati, you have an aristocratic wedding. There's a lovely courtly minuet before the final march because you're at court. That's the last part. You know, you have the church, the garden, then at court. So you have a minuet and then... Uh, a march. Well, here it's the Landliche Hochzeit, the the rustic wedding. It's peasant wedding things, um, and it's also another work which, like the Scambati, is, is today is good as unknown. It's on, it was on my list of pieces that have faded from the repertoire because nobody does it anymore. Nobody performs it. Nobody records it, and it it's it's a masterpiece. It really is. I mean, it's just a masterpiece of color and 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 melody and tonal projection. And it dates from almost around the same time as the Scambati. It's a little earlier, I believe. But it, it, you, you get the two sides, the courtly and the 
in the rustic, um, in the in the wedding genre. And I think that really makes a fun little concert, just just to enjoy and relax. And it's it's very unpretentious. I, of course, nobody would ever do this live. It's an impossibility, but we can do it at home. And I recommend that you do um, when you're feeling in the mood or if you're married or if you want to think about things like that or thinking of getting married or or just want to relax and enjoy some really, really attractive, sunny, romantic, unproblematic music. You know, there's just such a place in our lives for music that doesn't have to like, you know, diddle your viscera. I mean, it's nice to have your viscera diddled once in a while, but sometimes you don't feel like having your viscera diddled. And so if you're not in that mood, you just put it on and wallow. Have a nice, wonderful, warm bath in this terrifically mellifluous and sunny and captivating music. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.